Hello, good day, and welcome back. So today, we're going to continue with JWTs. Now, in the previous video, what did we do? We look at how we can create our JWT. That is, we took the data that we want to send about the subject and basically for that to create the payload. Now, that data that we had that we basically for to create the JSON JWT payload, well, those key value pair, each one of them is called a claim. So you're going to see me use the word claim and hear me use the word claim a lot in this video. So we saw how to do that essentially, I'm going to say the hard way, even though it wasn't that hard. It just simply means that we had to do all the pieces, right? We did this basic to forbidden coding. We did the sign in and all this other stuff. Today, we're going to use a JWT package and we'll see that oh, it's pretty easy, but it's good to know how it's done. So we have that information already. So let's jump in. So here I am in my project directory. And um, as you can see, I don't have much. I have example one and example two. And those are just skeletal code that I wrote so we don't have to spend too much time um, writing it. So what do I have? Well, for example, for one, you can see we have data that we were using before, which was this JSON document that represented our data that we then turn into a payload by base 64 encoding it. So what I've done is created a struct to represent the same data in the JSON document. And so for each of the field in our JSON document, you can see I have a corresponding field in my, my claims struct. Notice I call it my claims um, because it has several claims. And then I have the JSON tags to make sure that oh, it will give the same ID or field names in the JSON document. All right, so now that we have that, um, what else do we need? Well, if I create a variable of my claims, then I can populate it with the same data that I put in the JSON document. And so we could have read the JSON document and into like unmarshal it into a variable, but why do that? So that's what I have between line 28 and 20, 34 that essentially give us back what we had. Now, the new thing here is that on line 23, I pass in the key that we're gonna use for signing our JWT. So by having that as a flag, we can change it very easily. Next, on line 36, I simply call a function called create JWT, give it the key that we got from the user or use the default very secure that we have already set and I pass in the set of claims. Remember this claims is just a pointer to this value that I have. And then what I expect this function to do is return me a JWT string. And if there's an error somehow creating a JWT, I'll print that out. Otherwise, I just print out the JWT string. Now this function, as like I said, it's just a placeholder. And so right now I'm just returning EIE.io. Now this is the format with the two dots for JWT, but you get the idea. So we have to write this function. So let's start off and um, what we're gonna do is make sure we are in the correct directory. So we're gonna go to example one directory. If we run here, we can see that oh, it is not printing out the output properly. There's some problem there with how um, it's being interpreted and I really don't like that. So I'll, but at the end, you can see it just print out our expected output, but then there's this garbage that came out before. I'm going to install GoTask instead. Now, what is GoTask? GoTask is this utility that uses a task file. It's a YAML file, but it allows you to write down a set of tasks that you want to run. Now, if you program in Node or you write Node application, you are going to be familiar with task file. If you Java, it's similar to Maven and Gradle, um, C, C++, Rust world, it's going to be something like make files or something. And as you can see, it's very simple. So we have version on line one, then on line three, we have a set of tasks, and then you give it your task name. So let's say on line four, we want, since we're doing development, we'll say we have the dev task. And then what are the commands that we wanna run when we start, we run this task? The commands is to run my Go program. But instead, I'm going to build my, the program and create a output file called app. And what I want to do is also run it. So I'll use, you know, the just the next or bash ampersign to say, I want to do the first thing. And then if the first thing is successful, I'll do the second thing. That's all that means. And so even though I'm using fish shell, the way GoTask work is that 
it works even on Windows or in environments where you don't have Bash. So um, you won't have to worry about it. The next thing I want to do is I want to say that the directory in which I want you to run um, or build my application is the current working directory. Now, why do I want that? Well, if you look at where my task file is, it's in the root of my project directory. But I am in a subdirectory in exec01, for example, or it's going to be example02. And so if I list all the tasks that are available, you see there's none. That's because the task file is not there. But when I do list list all, I can see that the dev task is there. And then I can just say task dev. Now the minus W means watch. And so this is similar to air in that it's going to watch for changes and then rerun them when we run this task if the files that I change, um, the files change. All right. So we said we're going to use a package to do JWT stuff. So if you go to go.dev and we search for JWT, we see a number of packages, but I'm going to choose the first one. And there's a reason why. In the next set of videos, we're going to be looking at a web framework and that web framework actually uses this JWT package. So why not? So let's use that. So copy the um, package path and we'll paste the import and then we'll tell GoMat to, you know, download it. So how do I use this package that we just um, imported? Well, according to the documentation, you create a new token using the new with claims function of this package. And what you do is you pass a sign in method and then you pass the set of claims. So a claim is this interface that have these methods that it requires, you know, get expiration time, issue at, before, not before, and all that sort of stuff. I'm not going to spend too much time explaining all of these now, but in the very next video, we're going to talk about the standard claims or registered claims rather. For now, just know that all, this is the interface that um, the claim a value that we pass to this function would need to implement. Now, fortunately, we have a way around it. So if we go back and we look at how to use a custom claim type, which is what we're doing. Remember, we created our own claim type called my claims. We'll see that you have your fields. And then what you do is you embed within your struct this JWT register claims um, type. And then in order to create a token, you just simply call um, JWT new with claims, pass the method that you want to use, the sign in method and then the set of claims. So we can go ahead and now say we're going to create our token. And to create our token, what we're going to do? We're going to call JWT new with claims function. We're going to pass it our sign-in method, which for us, we want to use the sign-in method HS256. If you remember, that's the one we saw being used um, on the website, but that's okay. You could use almost anything, but we'll just use that one. We have our claims already passed there as a parameter. Next, we're going to say we want to generate the encoded token, which is that base 64-bit value, right, the JWT. And so we're going to call on the token value, we're going to call the signed string method. And notice it takes a key, and it says here that the signed string creates and returns a complete signed JWT. The token is signed using the signed-in method used in the token. So this is already in the token because we, we use that new with claims and say what the signing method is for this token. So we're now using that token. So it already knows what the signing method is. So okay, so once we call the sign string, we're gonna get back our JWT string and an error if for, a for whatever reason there's an error. If there's an error, we don't have a valid JWT string and then we can return the error. Otherwise, we return the JWT string and no. Now, on line 48, we're having this message, this error message, and it's saying that our, the value we pass for a pointer to my claim cannot be used here because it doesn't implement the JWT claims method, which is understandable because when we look at that function, it says that a value that passed there must implement all these, uh, implement this interface. So an easy way around that is to simply embed the JWT that registered claim that type already you know provides all these methods and notice it has is a struct that has all the fields and then there are methods to implement these um, that interface for the DOM. So we don't have to worry about it. 
So we go back and we just have to scroll up and add this type to our type. And voila, we now have a our my claim struct or type implements the, the methods. It implements the interface because it embeds a type that implements it. And you can see now we don't have an error. So if you look, um, to create a new JWT string was just two function call and um, we're done. If we look at what a token is, we can see that it just has this raw string um, field, in the sign-in method, the header, which you know we really don't need to control, the set of claims, and the signature once we generate it, and then whether or not that token is valid. Now, what I expected is that I code my task should have rerun uh, my program, but that wasn't happening and I wasn't looking at it. So even though I said watch this dev task for changes, well, the task doesn't know which file it should be watching. So I need to go back and say that oh, I want for this task in this directory, I want these sources to be watched or these source files. And so um, if I put in that main that go, which it's going to refer, to the directory that I'm in. Remember, with this task, we're saying that oh, it applies to the user's current work on directory, which is the directory they invoke this from. As you can see, now it rerun that, and I can see that oh, I'm getting this problem error that says key is invalid type. And the reason why is that when we call the sign string, even though key was set as an empty interface, it really want a slice of byte. So we have to cast our string to a slice of byte. And notice as soon as I do that, um, notice how my code um, gets recompiled and ex re executed because now the task knew which file to monitor. So I told it to watch for changes and rerun this task, but it didn't know which file to watch. So we could copy our new JWT. This is very easy now. Notice two lines of code we created JWT. We can go to the website and we can paste it in to see if it's valid. And no, what? We paste it. And look at that. Once we paste it, we can see that the payload shows up um, exactly as we expect. Now, the reason the signature is invalid is because the key is not correct. Now, notice while I start typing, it starts saying the key is it's actually a valid signature. Well, that's because it keeps updating it. But now that I type the key, uh, if I remove this and repaste it, you'll see that oh, it's still valid. As a matter of fact, as I start typing, once I got to very secure, you could see that oh, the signature actually matched up with the signature that we had. It's just a way of how the UI works, that's all. All right, so this is good. So now we see how easy it is to create a JWT with this package. The next thing we want to do is to be able to verify or validate our JWT if we're given one, and of course, recover the claims. So what we're going to do is we're going to close all our files here and we'll jump over to the main that uh, exercise two main. Now here we have the claim structure again, nothing new there. But look at line twenty three. So because I want to be able to read the JWT from outside of the application, so I don't have to paste it in the code. I'm going to look it up from the environment. So I could have passed it as a flag, but I think that was going to be too long. So I figure. Uh, environmental variable is easier. And so once I look it up, the next thing I do is just log it to the screen and then I call this function called get JWT claims. And the idea is that it's just going to return back a value of that struct that we use to create the JWT anyway with all those claims. And if there's an error, it's going to fatal and log. Otherwise, it's just going to print out the um, claims that is in that JWT to the screen. So you can imagine that we need to verify it and we're going to take action based on what is in the JWT. Now, once again, I'm going to run task watch um, for dev task in the exec2 directory. And notice it understood to go up until it finds a task file and then it found what command it needs to run and it's running. And we see now that it reads the JWT for my environment. Now, how did I get the JWT set in my environment? Now, if you are on running bash, you can use um, export and then a, the JWT equal and then provide the JWT string. Otherwise, if you're using fish like me, 
you can use set and then you have to use minus x to mean export it as an environmental variable and then you can then give the name of the environmental variable and then the value by running that command um, in a subshell. No, you don't have to run the command. You could actually just paste the JWT if you already have it copied like we did. Now, in terms of validating a claim, um, again, it's pretty easy. So if you work with a custom claim, notice in this example, they're going to simulate and say, oh, we have a token string already. That's where our JWT string is. And then we are going to call this method JWT parse with claims and give it the token string, give it the a pointer to the structure we want it to parse. And then we're going to call this function call um, that takes a token and then return two values. Now, if you look, you'll see that the values returning is actually the key that's going to be used to validate the token. So let's go ahead and write the code here that we need to recover our claim from the JWT string. Following the example in the documentation, we're going to first parse the JWT string to get the, to extract um, the, to create a token. So by parsing the JWT string, it creates a token. The token is what contains our string. If you remember when we look at the token type, it had a field called claims. So the, the signature, the claims, and the error will be populated after you parse the string. So if we pass our JWT string here and we pass our claim, remember our claim now um, implements the interface for claims, JWT claims, because it embed the JWT that register claim type. Um, pass a value that is appointed to my claim. And then for our function here, we're just going to return a slice of byte. Remember, we had the issue before when we run it, return it, use a string. So it's a slice of bytes. So we cast our key to a slice of byte. Now, we don't have an error now. Um, of course, we're not finished yet. But there's something here that I don't like. I think that oh, when you pass nested functions, the functions, and so on, it, it's just harder to read. So I would much rather create a closure that represents the function that is going to give us our key and just pass that um, value instead of our entire closure. It's just a little bit easier, in my opinion, to read. And anytime code is easier to read, this means to me it's more maintainable. So here I'm going to create a closure called JWT key function, and it just does that return the key for um, the JWT. And then now, instead of having all this nested stuff that my brains have to try and parse, I'll just pass it now as a simple value. And this to me makes a whole lot more sense. Even though it's a few more lines, it is just way easier to read. And I always go for readability and simple code. That's why I let go. And so now, what do we have? So we have a token, but we haven't stored it yet. Now, notice the value we pass in the set second place, the second parameter, is just a value that's on the heap. We did not um, pass a variable with this value. So it doesn't not store it anyway. It's simply using that type to say, oh, this is how I parse this token. And so by trying to parse the token using that information, we're going to know now if this token is valid. Remember the token had a field that says um, valid, which was a Boolean. So we can check that. Or we can simply say, you know what? We know that claims field in the token is an interface value. So why don't we try to typecast it to the type that we expect, which is a my claims pointer. And so if we do that, and we're successful in extracting the claims field in the token as a my claims structure value, then we know that our, our token, we were able to retrieve, um, recover the token successfully. Um, notice that there's this claim field that is an interface, so we can do a typecast on it. Um, now, notice on line 22, there's also valid. So we can check that to see if this token is even valid before we try to do the typecast, but I'm just going to go straight to doing the typecast. All right. Notice when I do the typecast, I, I'm saving two values. I'm saving the value that I would get back, and then I'm checking to see if it's okay. So if okay is true, 
the means that I got back, I was able to extract in my claims pointer from this claims. If not, that failed, then um, I would get back, you know, false, and then I can say unexpected claim type. Now, once I do this, notice how immediately the code runs and I get um, the set of claims fields that I'm looking for. So in this video, we saw just how easy it is to create a JWT using this package and to validate and retrieve the claims from a JWT if you got a JWT string. So that's it for this video. But before I go, if you reach this point in a video and you're not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. Um, you obviously watched the video and you thought it was something, um, even if you don't enjoy all of it, why not just subscribe? And also leave a comment saying what is it that you like or didn't like. For people who are already subscribed, thank you so much um, for subscribing and for sticking around and coming back. I appreciate it. Leave some comments on the video. Let me know what you think about JWT, what you think about how I'm presenting JWT. Um, is there something I can do better? I really appreciate it. I really love the feedback. Um, definitely thumbs up the video. And the last thing before I get out of here is my Tesla referral link. Again, if you or anyone you know is looking at buying anything from Tesla, please, please, please give them my referral code please use it. Um, it's another way of showing support for the channel. We both get something. It's actually a benefit for both of us if you use the referral code. Um, besides the Tesla referral link, there are other ways to support the channel, PayPal, um, Patreon, all that stuff. So if you can, if you can't, don't worry about it. Just enjoy the material. I'll be back with the next video. Take care. Have a great day. Stay safe. Bye.